we're doing another species spotlight. It's been a little while, and so to start with that, I'm gonna do a species that I think is really, really cool, and that is the Baja Cape Gopher Snake, or Pituophis vertebralis. So these guys are normally found in the very southern part at high elevations of Baja, California. So Baja, and then that part of the part of Baja, California is called the Cape at the very end of it, usually in the inland part between the Sea of Cortez and mainland Mexico. So Baja, Cape, and then Gopher Snake. This is not related to, it's not in the same gene, it's in the same genus Pituophis, but it's not in the same species as like say the bull snakes and the gopher snakes, uh, Catenifer. This is Vertebralis, it's an entirely different one. It was in the same species back in like the early 1800s, but it's since been its own species. And even then there's a little bit of controversy whether or not it should be split into two different subspecies, but I'll get to that in a minute. So where these guys are found, Baja, California, it is a very crazy environment. So down there, it's high elevation, but the ecosystem is very varied and very dynamic. It's very dry most of the time. There are like arid Sonoran cactus deserts, like mainland, uh, mainland Mexico, um, outside of the peninsula, that's like very cactus, very dry, very arid. There are some type of subtropical forests where there's a little bit more humidity in some pockets, but still also very dry. There are also old pine and oak forests all throughout this whole area of the entire peninsulas. But specifically where these guys have been traditionally found is usually in the more subtropical, but still kind of arid desert areas that have been traditionally been found there. I say traditionally because there's a lot of anecdotal evidence of where these guys have found. No one can really have any conclusive area. They've been found mostly in there, but nowhere really conclusively or consistently. So basically, they're found all throughout that whole area up into a little bit further north in the peninsula. But that's where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, the Also, the area where these guys are found, sometimes there can be no rainfall for years. But because of like hurricanes and seasonal flooding that comes out of the Sea of Cortez or the Pacific Ocean on the western side of the peninsula, they can get a lot of humidity that way as well as, you know, plants like those old growth pines and the cactus and the succulents and things like that. They're very good for holding and storing water. What's really cool about these guys is the fact that they can live in such a crazy environment. We now know like bull snakes and gopher snakes, like they can do all sorts of different climates in Colorado and as well as other places too, just here in Colorado. But these guys seem to do very, very well all over the place. But with that being said, this next part is actually what makes them very different from a lot of the rest of the Pituophis species in general. And that is, despite the fact that it's very arid, there's not a whole lot of annual rainfall and all of that other jazz, the weather and temperatures for the most part stay very consistent around in the mid to low 70s and the summer can spike almost into like the low 80s, but it, pays, it stays very consistent because of where they are and the climate and being surrounded by water on three sides. So because of that, because it never really gets high, a lot of people have trouble keeping the species if they do decide to, because they think it needs to be traditionally kept much warmer, but they do not thrive at warmer temps. These guys do very well it like say, so for this room right here during the day, it gets to about 77, 78. That's perfect for these guys. And at night it drops down to about 65, which is perfect ambient temperature for this species specifically. So people, if they decide to keep this species, they can end up having trouble because of that. They treat it like any other species of snake, especially when you think, oh, it's from, you know, closer to the Southern Hemisphere, closer to the equator. It's by the ocean. It's gotta be warm, humid, right? Eh, not exactly. That's what makes it kind of really, really tricky. Um, so with that being said, without further ado, let's actually talk about this guy, not just where they're from. So these guys are really, really cool. And if I can get them to spread out. So here we go. So this pattern is very reminiscent of say like a Brettles or Bredley eye python, where it's very kind of orangey red and it goes down to that black tail. With these guys, it's very similar. This pattern can be very variable, but it's usually very consistent about the colors that they are. It's that nice yellow sandy desert background and underbelly with that high red that as they get older, it has a tendency to get even more vibrant down to these black saddles here. The saddles can be very variable and there's even a couple morphs that are called patternless where it's more solid red into solid black. These guys look really, really, really cool. 
which is why I like these guys. They're a good moderate size snake. They get between like, you know, 36 to 50-ish inches. So in that like three to four and a half, close to five foot range, some males, because Pituophis as a whole, the in this species, in this genus, males are actually larger and it usually has to do with like combating and things like that. The males are actually larger than the females, unlike with a lot of like boa species like boa constrictors and pythons and things. They have been known to get to lengths almost up to 60 inches, which is the five feet. So they don't get nearly as large as say definitely the bull snake or even most of the pine snakes. Um, but these guys are a fair size snake. They're pretty cool. So think like corn snake, but a little bit maybe more robust. A really cool thing about the Pituophis genus is that these guys are really well known for their very loud defensive hiss. And you can see his tail rattling, which is a very common defensive mechanism, but this modified epiglottis that they have allows them to make a very loud, sonorous, very just crazy high hiss. And he absolutely has that as well, just like bull snakes and pine snakes and gopher snakes as well. But he's actually a pretty calm individual in general. So he's not doing it right now, but that is what they're known for. This guy without exception as well. And he's just being very cool and I love them so much. With that being said, this is the part where it gets a little bit confusing. So these guys are normally found down in this very end Southern part of the peninsula but their range does go up north above a very particular little area where the color variation seems to be more distinct and consistent with a little bit of integrating in between, which is why some Pituophis enthusiasts are want to actually divide it between Pituophis vertebralis vertebralis and Pituophis vertebralis bimeris, 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 something like that. I'm all, I always mess up those Latin names. I know it's terrible. Um, but that being said, these guys are really cool. They do very well in captivity if you just have to remember to keep them, you know, that really cool thing. However, because of that two distinction and they're not as commonly kept in the hobby, the pure lines of these are very small. So there's unfortunately a little bit of a genetic bottleneck with these guys, specifically for people, uh, forgive me as I mess with my headset, um, who want to keep that distinction between vertebral, so between V vertebralis and V by Maris. So a little bit with that, but I know there are some people around who do breed them. There's a local guy here in Colorado. There's actually a really cool um, breeder up in Canada. I think they're called Stampede Reptiles or Stampede Exotics. They do a lot with colubrids and specifically uh, a lot of Pituophis. And I know they do some stuff with these guys. And I would love to be able to get some stuff from them because while it's fairly bottlenecked and fairly closely related as with a lot of stuff because we don't have a lot of stock, bearded dragons, for example. Um, coming from Canada, hopefully there are a few populations a little bit away from each other before. So if I were able to import one from Canada, it'd be really cool to get a little bit of variation from that. Um, as far as the care goes, again, just remember the more moderate, cool room temperature. Think Asian rat snake almost. That might be a little bit easier. Think like, you know, the Japanese rat snake, the bamboo rat snake, that type of like ambiency, definitely not nearly as humid. As far as feeding goes, they do very well on rodents, but they also in the wild eat a lot of like ground nesting birds and eggs. So they would eat quail eggs and things like that. But overall, these is, this is a really, really, really cool species of snake that I am, I really wish I could get a pair to so that way I could work on that. I just have the single male who works very, very well. And I actually, um, because I started to get into them and I knew about keeping them, but I didn't necessarily know too much about like their growth rates and breeding as much as I do now. He's probably not gonna be a huge male because I didn't feed him as much as he could have been when he was younger. Cause he's about a year and a half. No, he's about two years old at this point, very close to two years old. But if you guys like this video, super awesome. If you guys have any more questions, concerns, comments about this guy, the species or anything else like that, please let me know down in the comments. Check out the social media, all of that jazz. Um, I'm starting to do a little bit more on TikTok. If you guys want more behind the scenes and updates and cool exclusives, as well as a little bit of, you know, merch rewards, you can check out my Patreon because I'm absolutely gonna have to be better about doing these shameless plugs. And I do a lot of behind the scenes, um, a lot of content, animals that I acquired that I haven't even shared with any of you guys yet new projects, new trips that I'm going on, you'll all know first at that Patreon, as well as, you know, private interviews with me, private tours via online, or we can arrange something if you were here in town or something like that. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this quick little species spotlight. I have a few more around here and I'm doing my best to stick with ones that I actually have in my care first. So a couple of you that have requested other animals that I don't personally keep, 
I have it on there. I'm doing research on it just because I personally have not put hands on the animals as much. I'm doing that a little bit further down the road, but I am working on it. I remember all the people who asked for that and it's written down in my lovely little snake notebook of notes. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.